address. Uh, still, there is a need of uh, you know kind of a good initiatives uh, towards people filing the tax, people coming under this all GST and all helping. I think uh, the GST, uh, the finance minister also mentioned about the number of invoices. Uh, what we made in the last 12 months is, uh, you know, a very great, uh, a good number. So this kind of uh, things happen, then definitely I think uh, we will have a better uh, stability in the uh, income level of the, uh, you know, country. And one more uh, very important thing I just want to bring your uh, notice here. If you look at the last 30 years of the government system in this country, whether it is a Congress, whether it is a BJP, whether it is a all party alliances. So there is always a kind of a growth, positive growth towards the corporate sectors. There is no, if BJP came, uh, there is no company said we are really going. Or if Congress is there, there is no company in this India, they told Yes, because of Congress we are redoing. So if you look at the the Bombay Stock Exchange, the Bombay Stock Exchange Index, in the last 20-25 years, you can see a very bad time no, no aid, aeroplanes, no you know proper transportation system in this world. But people used to come to India and study. So today most of our money going to other countries in the in the area of education. So when I talk about Indian higher education, today we have closely 995 universities, including the President's universities, and we have 44,500 colleges, and after the employment, the people who are working people, the second largest population in this country is the student population. So when you talk about the US, when we are talking about the US economy, the highest number of students who are studying in U.S. universities after the native U.S. students, it is Indian students. So a lot of money actually going to U.S., a lot of money going to U.K., a lot of money going to Europe, our money. So if we can able to build a great institutions, I think we can able to retire our talented students here. So what is happening is, when the students are moving to these countries, they are not coming back. The percentage of the people who are coming back to India to work in Indian companies are only 25%. The 75% of the people are there. They are living in US only, they are living in Europe. So that is the reason I think uh, we have to address. I think uh, uh, this budget is not addressed so much on this except a term called study in India that we are doing, I think, from long time. Uh, the other thing, uh, the personal tax coming to this, I think these these are the indications. Once we improve this, I think uh, definitely the number of people filing the income tax will increase. The government income will increase. So thereby, automatically, we will get a better infrastructure. We will get a better, you know, facilities on wherever we go. That what we can see in the last 10 years, the airports are developed, the roads, infrastructure is developed, the, even the railway stations today you have, major railway stations are connected with Wi-Fi facilities. I think uh, if you talk about uh, the telecommunication system in this country is one of the best when compared than anywhere. I'm not talking about the speed, I'm not talking about the 4G and 5G. I'm talking about the number of connections and the economy levels what we are working. Today we have closely 100 crore people using the mobile phone and uh, the data rates what we have is the lowest in the world when compared to even a small country like a Nepal, small country like a uh, Sri Lanka. So these all can improve when the personal incentives to the common people are Hello. When I talking, uh, when we, I was just listening to the farm, farming and uh, incentives, I think today in India, more than 10 states, uh, in the last 3-4 years, whatever government it is, whether it is again BJP or Congress, they, they 
wave dash the path roads, including Telangana, including in uh, Karnataka, including in Chhattisgarh, including in Madhya Pradesh, including in Andhra Pradesh, all these uh, places coming on. So the farm loads are there. So these all kind of incentives definitely will help farmers to move into this direction. And if you see some of the uh, states, especially uh, Punjab, Chandigarh, the kind of crop they adopt, uh, it's not like a regular basmati rice and one particular area, if everyone is uh, cultivating the tomato, they will cultivate only tomato. When there is an area when everyone is farming uh, onion, they, they do farming of onion. So suddenly there is a gap. So these all can be reduced uh, if you can give a, a proper incentive. Thank you. Just a quick uh, response to your question. So why I agree that we need to have more people paying tax. I think one of the reasons why they have reduced this tax and also given for personal tax, they have given two options to people. It is basically uh, to uh, increase consumption, a very simple level. It is uh, if you reduce the tax and also say that your savings will not uh, be considered when you are uh, paying tax, then instead of saving, the middle class typically con uh, puts the money, spends the money. Right? So the idea is to just galvanize this um, slowdown in a small way by making the middle class, which is very risk averse, which likes to save rather than spend. As Indians, we do that. The idea is to just, I, to some extent, and reducing the tax and giving you the option of, um, you know, not uh, okay, uh, putting, taking lower tax versus, say, savings and higher tax, is to uh, put some of the people who are saving small amounts of money to uh, put into consumption. So basically, the idea is to just galvanize the economy by uh, little small savings, which instead of savings would go actually in spending. That is what they're trying to do. I look at the other side, the corporate tax side, because I don't have much income to speak of working in government, so this is more interesting. Uh, one is the corporate tax cuts, number of them, just around just before the budget. So that, apparently the intention was to rouse those animal spirits, we will wait and watch whether those animal spirits are roused. Then infrastructure investment, where sovereign wealth funds are encouraged to invest in infrastructure and given tax stocks for them. Why not all other investments in infrastructure is a moot question, but it could have been done, but this is welcome. We have to wait and see how much it attracts investment, but a welcome move. Tax also sovereign wealth fund investing in infrastructure. Very good though, there was a mention of contract enforcement. We are notorious in this, both uh, governments and the private sector. So, to, to, uh, to move us in the direction of contract enforcement, there was a mention, we have to see the operational structure, but a good move. Jurisdiction agnostic, what they call faceless assessment and appeal. Jurisdiction agnostic assessment was already there, now you have jurisdiction agnostic appeals as well. You don't have to see the assessor. These are the things broadly that I can think of which has been mentioned for the corporate sector. Don't remember actually how much it adds up to, but these are more in the nature of reforms and tax for gone. Uh, they are revenue for gone rather than actual resource. What it doesn't do and I wish it does, if not part of the budget at least at some uh, future point of time, capacity building within the bureaucracy for contract reading for understanding the way the new financing system works. It is really very poor. These contracts are extremely complex. My research was in infrastructure and I had a very difficult time going through, like you were saying, you were reading the budget, doing your homework. It is so difficult for us to read and, and understand the budget itself, which is, a, which is just a speech. And then imagine the document. The documentation is huge. So there must be capacity building within the bureaucracy and in the private sector. Private sector it still exists in, the, in law firms and advisories. I think it equals with the rest in the world if you compare the really good advisories and the law firms. But it needs to be, there should be a more general understanding. So that is something that I would like to see, especially within the bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is the important point that raised 
uh, revival investment and growth based on this uh, personal income tax. So this, uh, I am seeing this because for a long time when we are getting a job, so when tax comes, our uh, uh, individual savings will go up. So how to do this? Especially up to certain stage, we always be in need of our money. And up to some other stage, it is okay. But above which, whatever money comes, it may be for the higher class. So, uh, yes. So, the pattern of tax should also be cha changed to some extent. The current year, this is the one of the years that the uh, finance minister has done a good work. But even then, I am not satisfied. Because if you are able to invest something, then whatever the category it may be, up to 50 lakhs it may be working. But after that, the government is unable to get the tax from the higher class. So, so, so our amount for the nation building is lacking still. So how it should be made? So that is what I thought of. But uh, it may be worthy, but if, uh, if it is practiced in future, for instance, if it is 50, 15 lakhs to 30 lakhs, so it, the amount is 30%. 30%. No, in future, 15, 15 lakh to 30 lakh, 30% tax. 30 lakh to 50 lakh, it may be 40%. So, above 50 lakh, it may be 50%. 50% you have to give the government. Because the beggars are living and farmers are living in the lowest level, poverty level. When you are top level, you also help the nation, at least for 5 years or whatever it may be. So this type of thinking, if the government is doing, then it will be a good thing. That is what I just want to address that particular point where you said yes, to boost consumption, reducing income tax helps because what do you do with that excess money? If you don't, if it is not attractive to invest in, let us say, PPF or something, then you just go ahead and spend, which is true. But on the other hand, what happens is these were the funds which are actually funding economic growth, funding government investment. So that, there you will lose out because you, you and I are now spending rather than putting it in small savings of PPF or some such instrument. So there is some which are doing again that's a wait and uh, watch factor which we should see over yeah, the The other positive thing is uh, uh, today the banking system, uh, the trust of the people has come down because of non-performing assets of different banks. So the finance minister's announcement of giving uh, insurance up to 5 lakhs uh, for a fixed deposit is a good move, I think, uh, it's a uh, you know, positive move towards people putting money in banks. Right. Uh, uh, to have a lot of, some time for the q and I would like to uh, uh, a final remark of the panelists are in the budget, which one you feel the best, you feel good or bad, okay? So you just mentioned how do you rate this budget and what is the best thing you feel good or what is the worst thing you feel bad in this budget? And if you rate this budget out of 10, how do you rate this budget? I knew that Dr. Satish will get me into trouble at some point or other. <laughs> if I am not in enough hot water already. Um, what I liked, of course, is uh, okay, this is uh, if you take a single issue, I like the 102 crore lakh, 102 lakh crore infrastructure investment. But that I partial to that area. So that uh, sector, so uh, that is something which I like. Uh, yeah, now, what I also observed, and I won't say whether I like or dislike, but what I also observed was that the, the whole nation was talking about constraints. But that is not what the finance minister focused on. The, what would, one would have expected is that she, uh, she says, I am I am presenting you a budget, and this is the scenario I am facing. There is lower water, rate of growth of GDP, rising unemployment, agricultural and farm distress. What is so are we looking at now? Uh, no, these are the, this kind of scenario is what 
I am facing rising unemployment, lack of demand. And within this constraint, this is the budget I am presenting and I am addressing it in this way. So then that would assuage, and, uh, you know, how, that would assuage the population. Oh, this is what the government is doing to address jobs. This is what the budget is doing in order to tackle farm distress. Farm distress to an extent there was the directed, uh, directed, uh, directed pressure. But largely, she chose to focus on thematic concerns, aspirational India, caring society and economic growth. Which is the reason why there has been remarks by several panelists as well as uh, those who spoke to the podium that it is a diffuse budget. It is a diffuse budget. It looks like a diffuse budget because it focuses on thematic concerns rather than say this is the problem and I, this is the way I am going to address it. I don't know whether it is good or bad. See the budget, like uh, Sir also mentioned, budget is a routine thing. Every year you are doing it. You can also do things outside the budget at any other time of the year. But the great use of the budget is a tool. It's a tool to send a signal. And by sending a signal that it is business as usual, the finance minister is saying something. She is telling us that just go ahead and put your hands to work. And use these micro initiatives which I am offering you and then we can address those larger concerns which will automatically get sorted out. We are able to operationalize this in a good way, which is itself a signal. You know, it is not that you should be pessimistic and look at the problem and say, but just to say that I know all these things are there, but this is what I am going to do, put your head and heart to work. So that is the kind of signal. It is one thing which, uh, you know, this is uh, particularly what was like and what you don't like. There was no mention of sports. Again, I am partial to that area, being that it is a particular sport. And if you recall also, as far as I know, correct me if I am wrong, she met many groups of people, industrialists, farmers, associations. There was no meeting particularly of sports uh, or sports activities. And there is no mention of sports, the Olympics are coming. I would have liked to see something. And it's an unusual career choice. We are looking at uh, jobs. It offers an unusual but very good career if it's in you. Okay, so the, this is the kind of, uh, that is one project perhaps that I go with a little bit.
we that is uh, one is to five. One acre irrigated agriculture is equal to five acres of unirrigated agriculture. So that is the main concern. So even small quantum of area is given irrigation, that will boost the farmers' income and the national income, so many things, employment opportunity, many things are there. So our large quantum of water resources are wasted. And we are always talking about there is no right. And uh, permit me one minute, I will give my experience, what, uh, whatever I learned in the past 30 years. I will tell you, because in the world, whatever the quantum of rain available on the whole year is not at all changed. That means from January 1 to December 31st, so this much quantum of rain up, the city of so uh, this means the land and the land, yeah, and sea area. These two things you have to think of. 25, 21% of the land area, 79% of the sea area. So how much rain occurred on the sea area you are not at all counting even now. But for one example, in 2015 you might have seen in Chennai was in floods. So it is on the border of this area. So if the rain goes through entire, entirely to the sea, the entire water will be gone, you are not at all bothered. But once it comes to the land area, you are getting clear. So that is the problem. So whatever quantum of rain comes, you have to store it, to save it, whatever extent possible. And our big dams are very, very minimal compared to the US and other things. Another thing, because many things are coming out, if you compare the area wise, China, US, these are equal area. This is three times more of our India. But our that is what population I can compare. Their population is only US population 36 crores. Ours is 136. So 100 for our land area is one third. And US China also you can see more or less the same of US. Yeah, that is why they are picking up. So since the land area is less, so water resources are there, suddenly a pouring of water comes, it should be how it should be stored. How oh, instead of linking up the rivers from uh, north to south, why can't you think of uh, reviving these small water bodies and other things? These are the helpful things for developing this agriculture. Unless otherwise water resources to be 100% developed, this agriculture cannot prosper us in that. So for this amount, amount is very, very, very negligible. So this is why our agriculture is not prosperous. And also technology-wise, the pygmy holding, half an acre, quarter acre, this type of farmers, what they can do. So for that, government has to think, cooperative farming. So in any village, so 100 farmers, all should come together. You can put the land on cooperative farming. You will get the amount of water amount by the government freely. One acre, 6,000, you can get it. But whatever the product it comes, that also comes to a share according to the. If these type of things are done, automatically agriculture will improve in the next few years and the government will also prosper us, the nation's prosperity cannot be questioned. So, but, uh, how long it takes, individual idea, how effective may be taken, we know, we, we don't say. That is what uh, my idea is. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. So please make it brief for how you rate this budget so that we can, after that we will take a question from the other. So uh, just to be brief, uh, we know data is the new oil. And the fact that this budget has out in India as a future data hub, where there is a lot, there will be a lot of employment. When we talk of data, we talk in terms of all this data that is getting collected right now through this, to our phones, the, uh, the surveillance cameras that are there, the huge amount of data that private and public uh, and government is collecting. And the, uh, uh, this particular budget, what I loved about it is that it's planning to use this and make India as a huge data hub. Imagine the amount of employment that will generate in the long run for all our young people who are doing science, technology, management, things like engineering. That is what I loved about the budget. My concern, as with other budgets as well, is what the professor said. I'm not happy if the agriculture sector is not addressed or we are not, uh, you know, really doing something very concrete and practical for them. 
and pushing them into the market uh, dynamics without actually giving uh, support, proper support to these marginal farmers, small, with mostly infant farming, I'm a little uncomfortable there. Yeah. Okay. So when he's talking about the brief, okay, to talk about uh, this budget, I think uh, today uh, in India, we are uh, having the largest pool of uh, middle class. 75% of our population are earning below 5 lakh annual income. I think this budget addresses this 75% of the population of this country. So I think uh, when it comes to the rating, definitely I will use 1.5 rating for this budget out of 10. Now we can take some questions from the audience, so we can take some three four questions. Please address to whom which panelist was asking the questions. When you are asking questions, introduce yourself and suggest that to whom you want to ask the question. A very warm welcome to everyone present here and uh, it's an honor to have the panelists in our college. So my question is to Dr. Ari Krishnan sir. So as you mentioned sir, the GDP rate in the initial year was 1%. So I would like to ask the question that who did use the concept called budget in India and what were the drawbacks and measures implemented in that financial year? Uh, can you just repeat? Who did use the concept budget in India? Okay. And the drawbacks and the measures or schemes introduced in that financial year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Oh, the first uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, 1947, I think. Uh, I think you're asking for how did the budget thing start in India. Is that what you're asking for? So, T.T. Krishnamurti was the person who started and after we got, became independent is when the whole concept of budget. Uh, the, initially, I'm giving an academic answer. Initially, the five-year schemes, five-year plans were, had more prominence. Budget is basically just how will you spend, the government will spend the money that they have, that they collect through taxes, excise duty, etc. for the year. In that sense, the professor was saying it is a very limited uh, role. And initial years, actually, budget, budget had, did not have that much of prominence, but five-year plans had. Because we were trying to sort of, after going through independence and after so much of uh, economic, um, I mean, just put it mildly, that problems that we had had, the idea was to galvanize the economy. So that is how we had started. Is that what you are asking for? No. Yeah, so uh, the idea focus was different now because we have become more fast-paced as economy and because we have uh, got uh, uh, linked to the world and things are fast, uh, going much faster than so five-year planning is, uh, does not make sense anymore and therefore these one-year budgets are becoming more and more important. Right? Because we are becoming more short-term in our uh, responses because we are linked to the global economy. I don't know if that helps. That's all I'm Thank you. So just that, to whom you want to ask a question. A very warm welcome to everyone present here. And uh, it's an honor to have the panelists in our college. So my question is to Dr. Ari Krishna, sir. So as you mentioned, sir, the GDP rate in the initial year was 1%. So I would like to ask the question that who introduced the concept called budget in India and what were the drawbacks and measures implemented in that financial year? Uh, can you just repeat? Who introduced the concept budget in India okay. and the drawbacks and the measures or schemes introduced in that financial year? Okay. Yeah, uh, so. Okay. Oh, the first, uh, first budget. Yeah, uh, 1947, I think, was uh, I think you're asking for how did the budget thing start in India. Is that what you're asking for? So, 
P.T. Krishnamurti was the person who started and after we got, became independent is when the whole concept of budget uh, the initially, I'm giving you an academic answer, initially the five year schemes, five year plans were had more prominence. Budget is basically just how will you spend, the government will spend the money that they have, that they collect through taxes, excise duty, etc. for the year. In that sense, as Professor was saying, it is a very limited uh, role. And initial years, actually, budget, budget had, did not have that much of prominence, but five-year plans had. Because we were trying to sort of, after going through independence and after so much of uh, economic, uh, I just put it mildly, that problems that we had had, the idea was to galvanize the economy. So that is how we had started. Is that what you are asking for? No. Yeah, so uh, the year focus was different now because we have become more fast-paced as economy and because we have uh, got uh, um, linked to the world and things are fast, uh, going much faster than so five-year planning is, uh, does not make sense anymore and therefore these one-year budgets are becoming more and more important. Right? Because we are becoming more short-term in our uh, responses because we are linked to the global economy. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Thank you. So my name is Prabhu Kumar Pandey and uh, I am Associate Professor at Presidency University. So when I was looking at the budget, so when I saw the many of the exemptions have been basically withdrawn, particularly like life insurance and the medical plan. So in some, uh, the, the one uh, very basic question that basically came to my mind that whether will this budget will again increase unemployment in the insurance sector. Because on the same day when I saw that the stock prices of the insurance all companies fell down by more than 20 percent. So uh, this is one of the questions, uh, uh, particularly from Kalpana uh, <laughs> or Anjula and anyone basically respond that how this uh, budget is going to impact the insurance sector particularly. Right? So regarding, regarding the income tax uh, uh, option, actually it's an option offer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is that what it gives you is uh, the possibility of a hassle-free, uh, filing a hassle-free tax return. Uh, so you need not worry about calculations, you need not, after you make that first option, which all of us are now doing and you have in WhatsApp, everybody sending comparisons, how you will have the old regime and the new regime. Once you go beyond that, and if this kind of trend continues, you simply file a return and without having to do any calculations. Which is important because time is money. In terms of real returns, does it really offer you a better deal? Uh, the, the general wisdom seems to be no. That uh, you know, given that 70 exemptions are removed, but 50 exemptions stay is the broad consensus. Figures vary, but this is what they say. It may it may offer a good deal to those who are earning below five lakhs and below seven lakhs, but beyond that. May not, it may be, uh, the old regime may be a better deal financially. But it, is, it does offer. Like, uh, no, I had people telling me, ah, now uh, at least I did not go to a chartered account. I can simply file my return online and that is it. So that is uh, a very good thing. Uh, the other part of your question. I think, are you talking about IPO, is it? So no, 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 no. no. I, my first question is basically if someone, uh, suppose all the investors here, right? They will be making money after some time. Suppose they basically opt for no investment option. That means they don't want to go for investment. Then what will be the future of the insurance companies in India when they are already suffering with the losses, right? The medical claim companies, insurance companies. And if they don't take insurance because the tax uh, is... No, no. Uh, I think you're making a difference there. Insurance has a difference. Why will they not take insurance? You will take insurance, but you will not get tax exemption on it. It's as simple as that. Insurance you will take not for tax, but for your own safety and but your family. That was one of the motivation, ma'am. That, that I'm asking. That tax benefit was one of the motivation for investing in, in the insurance sector. I think the insurance sector went down because of the IPO issue. If I'm not wrong, the initial public offering that they are the finance. Uh, minister is talking about where they're saying that um, uh, LIC and others, uh, LIC and IDBI also is now they talk of the farming that is, um, they uh, they will now go for initial public offering. I think that is what uh, uh, got the insurance sector to go down. And yes, partly it could be what you are saying because 
people also go for insurance because there's a tax benefit. Now they will not be, but I don't think it will really go too much up and down because the reason for insurance is something very different. So marginal, yes, but not too much. And I think partly it was also because LIC IPO was, uh, he's, they proposed to privatize LIC. I think that is one of the main reasons. That was basically for the LIC, but in the insurance sector or on a general basis, right? They, they will be basically uh, fault on one so, or It's just a sentiment thing. I think we know how these uh, stock market etc. work. It's a sentiment thing, it will go up, I think. Because insurance and they are not directly linked. You take insurance for something else, so after, after some time it will come up. I think it's just a sentiment thing that we saw a drop maybe then. Achha, one more question, just from uh, Anjula ma'am, basically. Uh, this new budget is basically demotivating us uh, for the new investments in the provident fund, etc. Right? It is not dealing us that uh, it is meant for increasing the something consumption. So, uh, do you think that uh, withdrawing the money basically from the future retirement benefits and putting them into the consumption is not going to put basically to some trouble in the private employees, particularly after retirement? See, actually, what has happened? We are going the American way. I mean, to tell you very honestly. So the credit part, when you borrow and you live in debt, that kind of an economy we are moving towards when we uh, encourage people not to save, right? That, I mean, having said that, Indians save too much is also one of the thinking that goes, that Indians save too much than what is required. There are enough schemes like insurance and pension schemes, etc., which will make their future secure. So after that, they should spend. So there is a, both sides to it. On one side, we are saying we're pushing ourselves towards the credit card economy. Right? The more we are making people uh, save less and take more debts and credits, etc., and move there. The other side is also the fact that we save maybe too much. Uh, the idea is to put it in long-term investment and then spend whatever you're doing at the, you know, the whatever little saving you're doing for the next two three years. So I think that is what they're trying to do. We'll take two more questions. Yeah. Good morning, sir. My question to uh, my question is to Hari, sir. So you know the current scenario of automobile industry. So what are the steps taken by the automobile industry in the current situation? Looking at the future, the electric cars are going to be implemented. So what are the steps taken by the government to uh, to revive the current automobile industry? Yeah, it's a good question actually. Thank I was you, reading uh, yesterday only about this. Uh, two weeks back, uh, I was at uh, California Fremont to visit uh, Tesla factory, the Tesla factory. So I took a test drive of Tesla, also visited how the Tesla car is manufactured and brought to the market. So today when you talk about uh, the entire automobile sector in the world, there is a report which published yesterday about the market capitalization of automobile industry. Today you have a largest selling car selling company, which is Toyota. They sell the largest number of cars in the world. So, so they listed all the companies and they said they told they given a, a prediction saying Tesla is the most innovative company which is having hundred billion market capitalization compared to the number of cars which are sold by other companies. If, if you look at the number of cars sold by Tesla, it's the lowest, which is the lowest in the chart. There are 20 brands of the cars and Tesla is the lowest. But when you look at the market capitalization of this car, the Tesla is in the fifth position. So again, to relate to your question, now in Delhi uh, at Greater Noida, there is an auto expo is going on. So in this auto expo, I, I was there three days back in the auto expo. So what I see in this auto expo, particularly in the Delhi auto expo is, you have a lot of Indian cars, Indian cars, which are having a large crowd compared to other foreign brands. For example, the car which is manufactured just uh, 70 kilometers from here, the Kia, in Hindupur, they launched a car just yesterday in the market and this is one of the best innovative car in the recent decade. 
And when, you, when I looked at a couple of other brands like a Tata, they come out with now uh, the electrical car. So I think these are all very positive signs in the automobile industry because they have to innovate. If, if they produce like, like what happened to Ford, what happened to GM, is going to happen to this industry if they don't innovate. So the car industry actually they have to innovate. They have to bring a new technology, the hybrid technology, which in the US, majority of the people they use. So if they can able to bring this kind of innovations with a lot of safety futures, uh, because the driverless car, what people are talking, uh, this is only in the news, but uh, it will take large number of years to come into the reality, even in US, even in US, it is not available now. All in, uh, you know, in trials only. In fact, uh, we visited Tesla to know about this one. So, but they told uh, the hardware is ready, the software they are developing uh, to to implement in the roads. So it will take one more two to three years to do, do that. So I think Indian companies, especially companies like Maruti, uh, they are doing a very good, great job. The Tata also again. So now, if you talk about Tata, so some of the best brands of the world, including uh, you know the Range Rover and all. This comes under the Tata. So these all brands are managed from India. So I think this industry will create a lot of employment opportunities to the youth. Because uh, the system, how it is working, the Ola and Uber, the Ola and Uber, they came into the market. So today, if every, every minute, 5,950 people, they book Ola in India using the app. So, but if you talk about the reality, not even the Ola tire belongs to Ola company. So it is only the app what they have. So that kind of a technology, I think, is going to come in the automobile industry also. I think people owning a car, the habit, may come down in the next 10 to 15 years. Because you see, uh, especially Bangalore, if you talk, uh, again, not only the Silicon Valley, not only the Techno City, they given report just 10 days back. The highest traffic on the roads is in Bangalore, not in Tokyo, not in Jakarta. So today, the kind of money what we spend importing the petrol, importing the diesel has to come down. So that is how we can increase the economy. I think the first initiative started from Bangalore, the Reva car. I think most of you people are familiar. It comes from a family called Maini family, which is an electronic city. So greatest innovation after that, Mahindra is taken over this car. So if this kind of innovations happens, I think Indian automobile sector is going to create a, a great impact in the global automobile sector. Thank you. Uh, one more question to add yes. if, you, if you don't want to add on the highlights, what is there for the automobile industry in the budget for 2018, what would you be sir? Okay. Uh, I don't think uh, any points, any incentive uh, they're given uh, uh, to the, except, uh, except for the electrical car, I think there is a, uh, the incentive continues. And the second thing is importing uh, the electrical vehicle. Also, some incentives were announced. Except that I think uh, not much incentives to the automobile sector. As you know, the FM has been addressing a series of uh, fora, both press conferences and otherwise, where she has been clarifying and answering questions and all. And she was asked this very question, what have you done for the automobile sector? Because if you remember when the first talk of economic slowdown was there, so one of the major indicators was the auto sector. World over it is the same in India also, that was our primary indicator. And she did say that, no, I have not done anything specifically for auto sector. And she, she came out very candidly and said, and so also with mining, manufacturing, construction other than affordable housing. So there is no specific. What is the expectation is that the corporate tax cuts and the series of other initiatives which, which they have taken towards ease of doing business will impinge upon these sectors also and then go on to help the growth of the sector and creation of employment. So she very clearly and candidly said that I am not going sector wise and doing. She has addressed broad concerns rather than specific industries.
everybody is supposed to be concerned about budget because the life depends upon it. But nobody is concerned like you could have seen, felt it. But anyway, uh, the, uh, the question is how we are going to get the attention of the student to speak about their life. Because uh, as I was mentioning, somebody was mentioning, uh, the population of years is 32 billion, uh, 32 uh, crores, where 136. Yet they are doing 22 trillion economy, we are struggling at 2.8. Where is our interest? Where is our focus? One of my PhD uh, classmates, uh, we were discussing in a group, he said, as an Indian with this much of population, are we lacking somewhere that uh, we are not culturally or politically disintegrated from the economy? I want you to mention how the youth should take part and focus and how you are going to focus, make students motivate each and every one. Please address each and every one, not me in particular. Each and every one, how it is going to be concerned, how, how the much we be interested. Wonderful yeah, I'll start. Okay, let, let, let me give you a specific recipe. I don't like this doom and gloom. I'm very happy if all of you listen to music because then the music economy will grow. And the music economy is part of the creative economy of the country. Okay? So when there is growth, the entertainment industry is also part of the same growth. Let me tell you what you can do and what, uh, and this is right and tested because I have been doing it for the past many years. I advise all of you to have two careers. Listen carefully, all of you plan and you are all very young. I started thinking of this very late, so I was rather late in the game, but I will give you, my daughter says that you want to give all your experience so that we never make any mistakes. You want to give us all your combined experience. So I am trying to do the same thing. Have two careers. One is your bread and butter career. The one which pays the bills, puts food on the table, takes care of your family. Have a second career, which is your career of social responsibility. Do something. Join the NSS, plant a tree, start a movement, Teach a child, do something, and please hold these two family careers throughout life. Choose an area of either your expertise or your passion. If music is the thing, just go to a hospital and sing for the patients. It will cheer them up. And do this as a regular thing. It's a career, remember. So you've got, you've got to put that effort to it. So if you want that the quality should improve, you should have two cells, two careers. One, your job, where you work give your commitment, another is your career of social responsibility. One last question. Yeah. This is going to be last. Okay. Sure, so my question, so my name is Iman Shugan, I am the software faculty for your uh, school of management. My question is, okay. so my, my question is uh, from the uh, K.K. Shivasopra. So on the day, what if we saw that uh, the Sensex dipped 1,000 points? Okay, so we, we see Sensex as uh, the scale on which Indian economy is uh, judged. If the Sensex does, does well, we feel that uh, India is doing well. For the past three years, I'm observing that our, our Sensex is not growing uh, as at a very high rate. It is, it is, not, it is stagnant. The rate of increase in the Sensex is, is very stagnant. So what do you think is, is going wrong? Where the, the market is getting slow? And from this budget, what are the key points which will impact the Sensex move faster? So that the investors, those who are ready to invest in the financial market, might see some good returns coming up. So let, let, let me give you a quick answer. First, yes, if the census is slow because there is a worldwide slowdown, India is also facing a slowdown. So you see it there, right, in the, in the curve that's not rising as much as you would think. The second point is to what will the budget uh, make the census seat? Uh, government ultimately is the biggest spender in the economy, right? They have the maximum money. So whichever sector they will put the money in, where there will be a lot of churning, for, uh, that is where um, yeah, we will see growth. If they say education and institutions, automatically we will see construction of 
teachers, all of that will start getting galvanized in the economy. That is how it's in very simple form it works. So if I look at this budget, I do see railways is one. They have put huge amount of money in railways. We didn't talk about it. So on, the moment you say you're going to uh, improve the gorge uh, connections and those uh, and the telecom, etc., you will see a lot of infrastructure, etc., coming there, and there'll be movement. Big money has gone in education, where they're going to construct institutes, etc. So uh, these two, as Ma'am was correctly saying, we, they are not focused on private sector as such, where say automotive or say retail. They have not done uh, things where the private sector will get galvanized, but they have done. Uh, they focus on sectors. Where, where they're going to spend big money, and there, whatever is the indirect impact, that will happen to private, in the sense of steel, construction, etc., and all of that is private. That is where the marginal impact or indirect impact will be. So, if you are expecting census to shoot up, it will not, but it will remain stable because they are putting money in areas where there will be an indirect impact on other uh, sectors which are governed by the private. Actually, it was an amazing panel. Uh, I thank each panelist. Uh, you know, it's funny you are saying all the way come here. We have covered from you know agriculture to rural development to water mobile industry, personal tax, carpet tax. We have covered many things. So one observation out of the all these panel discussion is we all can see the lot of good intention in the budget. So there are a lot of good intention from the government in the budget. And the kind of, you know, we just wonder how they are going to implement all this. Will all this will work out? So how these are, you know, in a practical, real time, how these things are going to be work out? So that is the one thing we just wonder, uh, the, the practical implementation part of it. Let's see what the government is going to do. So by thinking of panelists, once again I thank all of you coming over here. Uh, on behalf of the university and my own students, I thank all of you. Thank you. Yeah. It was an enlightening and engaging discussion. Thank you so much. And uh, a big round of applause for our panel. Thank you. Now, at, uh, now I invite Dr. Atila P. Udupa, Associate Professor, School of Management. Another panelist of the day is uh, Dr. Atila.